the type of a returned value of methods and the type of parameters of methods and constructors can also be other than only primitive. We can easily pass an object as a parameter or create a method which will return an object. For example, when we want to compare the volume of two boxes, open our box class. Now within it, let's create a method which will accept another box as a parameter and which will print out the result on the console. The volume of the second box is bigger, smaller, or equal to the volume of the first box. This method will simply print data on the console, so its type will be void. Let's call it compare. And its argument will be another box which we will compare with. Let's create two variables which we will store the volume of the boxes. The first one will store the volume of our first box in which we call the method. Let's call it this volume and assign it the value which is returned by volume method. It means we'll calculate the volume and save it in variable this volume. The same we will do with the other box we will compare it with this box. Type double and name it box volume. Assign symbol. Now we will call method volume in this box. Type box dot volume. And now specify a condition. If our first box, the one from which we call the method, is bigger in volume than the box we are comparing it with, print out our box is bigger. Type else and specify one more condition. Now we will compare if our box is smaller than the box we are comparing it with, the line must be printed out. Our box is smaller. Otherwise, if our box is neither bigger nor smaller, which means that the boxes are equal, the line must be printed the boxes are equal. Now let's open method main. We already have two boxes, so we'll delete all the rest. So now let's call method compare from the first box, box. As a parameter, we will pass the second box. In this case, the second box is bigger. So when we run the program, it prints out our box is smaller. Now let's switch the values and call method compare from the second box and compare it with the first box. When we run the program, we can see that our box is bigger because we called the method from the second box. Now if we compare the second box with itself, that is if we pass as a parameter this very box too, Running the code results in the message. The boxes are equal. Of course they are. We have compared box 2 and box 2. And what if we don't want to print this information out on the console? How can we retrieve the data from method compare? In fact, such a method is often used to compare different objects and its return type is cast to int. Then depending on the results of the comparison, different values are returned. If the object from which we have called the method, also known as calling object, is bigger than the object which we have passed as a parameter, the return equals 1. If it's smaller, the return is minus 1. If the objects are equal, the return is 0. Let's modify the method. Now it will return in type. The method will do the same. It will accept the value of the volume from our box and the value of the volume from the second box. But this time nothing will be printed out on the console. If our box is bigger than the box we are comparing it with, then the return will be 1. Type return 1. Otherwise, if our box is smaller than the box from which we have called the method, 
the return will be minus 1. And if the boxes are equal, we will return 0. In the beginning, I have told you that if a method returns something other than void, it must terminate with the word return. Now it may seem that our method does not terminate with the word return. But in the second thought, it is return, which will be the last function performed. It means that we will compare the values and if our box is bigger than the one we compare it with, the return will be 1 and the rest of the code will be skipped. It means that the last function will be return 1. Otherwise, if our box is smaller, it will return minus 1. And the rest of the code will be skipped. So return will again be the last function. And finally, if our boxes are equal, the return will be zero and nothing else will be done after it as well. This is a very common practice, but there are some companies where this method is not in favor. They prefer to do so. We create variable result without initial values. If our box is bigger, 1 is assigned to variable result. If our box is smaller, minus 1 is assigned to variable result. Otherwise, 0 is assigned to variable result. Eventually, a variable result is returned. So stick with whichever way seems more convenient to you. Now open method main. Let's modify it. We will compare the first box with the second one. If we run the program, nothing will be printed out in the console. Let's save the result of the comparison in variable result. And depending on its value, we will choose a line to be printed out. Let's use switch case. As a parameter, we will pass result type case minus 1. It means if variable result equals minus 1, we will print out our box is smaller. Write break. If result equals 0, print out the boxes are equal. If result equals 1, print out our box is bigger. Other values are not possible, so we can do without writing default. Run the program. As you can see, our box is smaller. If we change its size to 100 and run the program, we will see our box is bigger. Now let's make it possible to create other boxes of the same size as the ones we are going to pass as a parameter. In order to do so, create a new constructor which will accept as a parameter another box. Now we will specify keyword this for the instance variable. It's not necessary, but it will make this code easier to understand. We will set the value which we have retrieved from the box passed as a parameter. And we will do the same for height and length. It's all set. Let's open method main. We'll delete the code for creating boxes and then create new boxes. Box, box1, assign symbol, new box. All its dimensions will be 10. Now create a second box, box2. And pass as its parameter our first box. Now let's save the value, the result of comparison of the first and second boxes, into variable result. Run the program and the line is, the boxes are equal. Now keep in mind, 
that in this case, there are two absolutely different boxes, although they have the same dimensions. These variables refer not to the same box, but to completely different ones. To make sure it is so, let's alter the value of one of the boxes. Using method setDemands, we will set all the dimensions as equal to 100. Run the program. This time, box 1 is bigger than box 2. Now let's consider another interesting thing. Methods can return us not only primitive types, but also an object. Let's create a method which will return us a box, the dimensions of which are twice as big as the box from which we call this method, that is twice as big as the calling object. Let's learn the correct terminology. Create a method, it will return us a new box. That's why the type of the returned value will be box. Let's call the method increase. It will not accept parameters. It will be used to create a new box. And as the parameters, we will pass it the dimensions which are twice as big as the dimensions of the calling object. Right. Width times 2. Height times 2 and length times 2. And to return the box which has been just created, write return box. As you can see, something is highlighted in yellow again. We can do without this variable and instead write return new box with the given parameters. Now let's open method main, delete the last two values and create the second box. We will get it from the method which we will call from box 1. This method is increase. It will accept the parameters of box 1, multiply them by 2. Create a new box with the resulting parameters and return into variable box 2. Let's delete this comparison and print out information about both boxes. Call method show volume. It shows the volume of the first box is 1000, of the second 8000. Since we have multiplied all the dimensions, length, width and height by 2, the volume increased by 8 times. Let's improve our method a little. In this case, method increase returns a box with all its dimensions twice as big as the dimensions of the calling object, in this case box 1. But we can create a universal method which we will multiply not by 2, but by i times. Let's pass variable i as a parameter. Thus, we will increase all the dimensions not by 2 times, but by i times. This method will be more universal. Now we cannot call this method without specifying its parameters. Let's specify 2. In this case, the output of the method must be the same as in the previous example. And this is exactly what we see, 1000 and 8000. Now specify 3, 1000 and 27000. It works. Now here is the homework assignment. In our box class, create a new method which will accept as a parameter another box and return a new box object. The dimensions of the new box must be as follows. The length of the new box must be equal to the length of the box from which we have called the method, plus the length of the box passed as a parameter, and the same for the width and height. Also, add one more constructor, which accepts as a parameter two boxes. As a result, we must have a new box which is bigger in volume than the sum of the volumes of those two boxes. You must demonstrate how these method and constructor work in method main. See you later.